Václav Klusák. I work for Klokan Technologies. I will be presenting to you today uh, two of our projects. One is called Old Maps Online, the other is, the other is called GeoReferencer. Old Maps Online is a project that uh, started here in the UK at the University of Portsmouth. It's uh, basically what the name says. It's a large collection of uh, old maps and it's an online portal uh, intended for general internet users. I will now show you the interface in a short video uh, so you can see what it looks like and what it does. So here's the, here's the website, that's pretty much it. It's uh, dominated by the map which serves as a search interface. You zoom and pan on, pan on the map as you would on Google Maps or something similar. And uh, on the right side, the interface gives you context for what you see on the map. It will give you a list of uh, maps from the collection that cover the same area that you're looking at. Yeah. You can uh, type a place name like London here. You will get maps of London. And when you uh, move around, the list updates. Yeah. The, the blue rectangle that you see, that's the query bounding box that's, uh, that's used for, for the search. You can also specify it yourself. And you can browse through the list of results. You can see uh, more information about the map. You can go through the whole list. And you can also go to, the, uh, to another page that gives uh, the full presentation for the map. And uh, there you can actually look at the full resolution picture, which you will see soon. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> so what, what was that? It's a, it's a search engine for maps, basically. Uh, you, you find the area that you're interested in, and uh, uh, you can, but it's not uh, just a search engine, it's more like a browser. You can just go to the database and start looking around. What you want to see, what you're interested in, uh, you can also give it time and scale filters if you're interested in maps from a certain area uh, for, uh, for, for, of a certain scale or some specific time period, you can do that. There's also a full text filter, uh, so you can uh, look for maps of a specific publisher or uh, some uh, place name that you're interested in. And uh, the list of results on the right is uh, ordered. It's ordered by geometric similarity to the query you're giving. So it will put on the top of the list those maps that match the most the, the area that you're looking at. That's pr uh, pretty important because uh, uh, the world maps, the maps of the whole world, they cover everything, right? So if you just uh, ask for uh, intersection, you will get a lot, lot of nonsensical uh, results. If I'm interested in London, I don't want to see a world map. So uh, that's, uh, that's really important. And another important fact is that it's, uh, it has immediate feedback. It's fast. When you pan around, you immediately see results. That's uh, what drives the user interaction. Data in this uh, collection come from libraries and archives from around the world. There are uh, around 300, uh, 130,000 maps right now, but we are growing. And uh, as I said, it's a search engine. We don't steal the data. We don't uh, get it for ourselves. We just link to the original sites. And uh, so we basically provide a service to those institutions. There's a list of the institutions that are currently in the system. Right, uh, so how is it implemented? It uses our map rank search technology that we developed and use for 
several other projects as well. Basically, it's a database. It's a collection of records, maps, but it can be anything else. Those records have uh, geometries. Uh, we import them from well-known text or well-known binary. Uh, in the old maps online and other systems, we also associate metadata with, the, with these records. This metadata is inspired by Dublin Core standard, but it, uh, we can also provide other attributes, other kinds of data uh, for custom purposes. And as I said, the, the query is driven by the bounding box. O when you ask the database for something, you always give the bounding box that specifies the context that you're interested in, the place on the earth that you're interested in. It's uh, basically a presentation technology. It's uh, intended for uh, web portals that are used by many people at the same time. So it has to be fast. It's optimized for searching, not for storing. Right? It's not really a database. It's basically an index. Uh, there are some, some compromises that you have to make if you want uh, such speed. For example, it's read-only. The, the, the in database file, you have to create it every, uh, you have to create it again every time you change the data. Right? So we have a master database of records, and we recreate this uh, read-only database every night or whenever there's an update. It's in a machine-dependent file format. For extra speed, we just map uh, the file to memory. The keyword for anyone interested in databases is word aligned hybrid compressed bitmap indices. It sounds crazy, but it's uh, basically a pretty known technique for fast uh, indexing, for fast searches, and it's used in uh, data warehousing and stuff like that. And what's uh, really uh, different about this uh, from as compared to other data structures, the response time for the query is independent on the bounding box. As I said, if you, uh, it doesn't matter if you ask for the whole world, or uh, London, or uh, your house, it, will always, it should always run in, in the same time. It will give you the relevant results and ignore the rest, right? Because if you use Quad3 or something a little bit uh, special, uh, it, it has problems with the world maps because if you ask for the for some small region, it uh, it can ignore the the huge maps and they they'll muddle the results. Right, so th that's important. At the infrastructure side, uh, it uh, runs as a fast G fast CGI application on Linux. The URL queries uh, conform to the Open Search standard and uh, results are in JSON. So basically, you can use it as a, a regular REST API or HTTP API. Uh, the client that you saw, the user interface, is written in JavaScript. Uh, we use uh, Google Closure tools for JavaScript to compile it. And uh, the, the interface map it can be Google Maps, on Open Layers 3, or Reflet, we don't care. Or it can be something else entirely. OK. So if you want to get your data into old maps online, and uh, I hope at least some of, uh, some of you want, uh, you, as I said, you have to give uh, geometries for each record. The data has to be georeferenced. But the, these are old maps, right? They belong to libraries. And what they do is basically they take the paper maps and they, uh, they digitize them. They photograph them, basically. So what you get is an image. And then they put the image on their website. But that's not a map. You need a georeference. You need to know where it is, what it covers. How do you do that? We have a service for that as well. It's called Georeferencer. Right now, it's really intended for libraries and archives with uh, large collections. 
and it gives them a way to georeference their data by crowdsourcing, by using general public, regular internet users that go to their website, they get interested, and they do the georeferencing. The library gets georeferent out of it, and the users get some friendly competition uh, and uh, nice shiny things to look at, basically. This work is sponsored by Moravian Library. It's a research project in the Czech Republic. Yeah, again, these are uh, some institutions that already did their uh, georeferencing with us. How does that work? Basically, users go to the institution website. They have a large page with plea for support. And there's usually a button that says, OK, I am interested. Give me some map to georeference. They click the link. And they get to an interface where they add ground control points and cut lines to maps. Uh, this is, it's really, we try our hard to make it as easy as possible. So you don't have to be uh, locked in if you, when you're creating uh, the georeference. We ask you to log in afterwards, but even then you don't have to. If you don't, we just store the georeference as anonymous and then ask someone else to look at it and save it under his name. So you, you don't have to uh, give us anything, really. Uh, we stole the full history of all edits, of all versions. So uh, there is no problem like somebody comes in and destroys the work some, that someone else did. We always store only the changes, so we know exactly what happened when. And there is a quality control. We can designate some users, usually employees of the institution, and they can go through the georeferences, verify them, and then those verified versions will go to export. Okay, this is what it looks like. This is the georeferencing interface. There's a base map on the right and the scanned image on the left. The user creates cut line, uh, ground control points. And then they save the work and if they are if they come here from the institution website, they will go immediately from this to a 3D visualization to give them something really, some reward, right? They did some work and they want to look at it. So that's what we do next. Uh, usually, uh, the library will create a project page for this. There's a progress bar that says, how many maps are already georeferenced, how many are still in the queue. There is a list of uh, top contributors where people can look at it and hope they will get there or compete with each other. We've seen some insane competitions already. Uh, right, so what, what, what's the output? Users add ground control points, but what happens next? Basically, anything you want to. We provide uh, overlays over Google Maps, WMS, WMTS. Uh, you can, as I said, you can view uh, the result in Google Earth or download the KML, which is usually what's really attractive to users. Uh, the reviewers can use a map analyst for accuracy analysis. When they're verifying the work, uh, we have a web interface to Map Analyst that runs on our server, and it uh, responds over HTTP, so we can show you distortion grids, stuff like that. Libraries, usually they're interested in uh, MARC 034. MARC is a standard for metadata for libraries. This, uh, this field gives the bounding box of the, of the, of the map. We also have a tool called GDAL Georeferencer. It's a script in Python. If you have a map in Georeferencer and it's already georeferenced, you can call this script on your master TIFF or ECW file or something. 
you give uh, the identifier of the map in georeferencer and this script will download the list of control points and create a VRT file that adds these control points to your master file. So at the end you can warp it or do something else with it. And uh, we also are right now adding support for annotations for linked data. Here is the 3D view in uh, embedded Google Earth. That's what the user sees. Here's a video, video of uh, WebGL-based uh, presentation we're working on right now. It's already deployed, but it looks a little bit different. We calculate the uh, transformations on the fly in JavaScript and uh, display it with uh, WebGL. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's it. Right. And again, we don't steal data. We, you don't have to upload your uh, TIFF files or anything. We use uh, public image servers that are already exposed by the libraries, uh, running on their servers. We support a whole lot of uh, image server formats, uh, just three of them here, but uh, we have more. Uh, the only image data that we store are small thumbnails that we display everywhere. Uh, metadata uh, that's associated with uh, these maps is basically the same as in MapRank. So if you have a successful georeferencing project in georeferencer, you, we can just export the data and create a map rank visualization for you. All right, that's it. Here's <laughs> okay, I will now take questions.